Praise God, that's a sobering word, isn't it? And uh, part of me wants to just say, let's go home. But I'm just going to trust the Lord in a way the thoughts that I had this morning would have been a good setup for that. But the Lord has his way of doing stuff. And uh, the scripture I had on my heart this morning uh, happens to be Matthew 25. <laughs> so I don't think there's any. I think that's what the Lord is trying to emphasize to all of us. But part of it is I, I was going to set up the context in which this occurs because it's important. And I believe God wants us to understand. You know, uh, I, I'm just thinking recently that it's been a long time since we've really talked a lot about the end of the age and the things that the Lord has shown us. We've made reference to it. And you, you sort of feel like, well, everybody knows that. But, you know, generations come and go. And, uh, you know, it, these are truths that we need to have fresh in our minds, especially as we see things unfolding. Yes. There's no question. We see the things that God showed us so many years ago unfolding. He didn't, you know, he, he's revealed to us the loosing of Satan, but he also revealed that we were at the 11th hour of earth's history and showed us what was going to happen in that last hour and how it was going to turn out. And here we are in the middle of that, watching it unfold, and we need to be aware. We need to live and walk in the light of what God is showing us. And uh, amen to, to what Ricky has said. And in a way, I'd love to have that at the end of this, but we'll, we'll see what the Lord has. But anyway, he has already read this passage in the King James. I'm not going to reread it, but uh, anyway, what Jesus has been talking about is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I think most of you realize that among the Israelites, among the Jews, their concept of a kingdom was a very earthly one. In fact, that's what you get with, it, with, with natural people. They're thinking in terms of this world. The world is planning on how is the human race going to go forward. Well, Israel had prophets that were sent to them. They rejected them, but yet there was a message that promised a kingdom a Messiah who would establish a kingdom and it would rule over the world. And what God was doing was concealing his purpose from the devil until it was time. And it was a kingdom that was very real. But it's not a political kingdom. It's not, Jesus said, the kingdom of God doesn't come with your careful observation. It's not something where you're going to be able to see, there it is, or there it is. Or there's the headquarters, this is the organization. It's none of those things, none of those earthly things. It's a kingdom that is more real than any kingdom that exists because this world is going to pass away. Everything about this world, as we've said so many times, is totally temporary. And how often do we live as though this is what it's about and it's not? But anyway, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. And you know that when uh, John came and then in the ministry of Jesus, they proclaimed the kingdom. And it absolutely came forth on the day of Pentecost. The kingdom was Jesus Christ reaching out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How many of you know that the lost sheep was not all of Israel? He looked some of them in the eye and said, you're not my sheep. But he also said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I must also bring, and there shall be how many folds? One fold. one fold, one shepherd. God had in mind a kingdom that was very real, that was established in the hearts of people who were born of his spirit, of the very life of heaven. And they would come first from the remnant of Israel that were really his sheep and not the, not the others. Judgment was coming upon them. But God was establishing a kingdom and it burst onto the scene on the day of Pentecost with great power. And it began to reach out among the remnant of Israel. Then it began to reach out among the Gentiles. And Jesus said that the kingdom, uh, the gospel of the kingdom would be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end would come. So there is a process. God has allowed this world to exist with all of its corruption and all of its sin. But in the midst of this, his purpose has always been to call out a people, to, call, to bring them to a place of genuine heart repentance 
and faith in his saving power so that we might receive a life that has nothing to do with anything you can get in this world, nothing you can get by any of your own efforts, but a supernatural life that is born into the heart. That's exactly what Ricky was just talking about. Folks, if people don't have this, they don't have anything. You don't have anything. And that's a lot what, what this passage is about. But anyway, he, he talks about the, he pictures the kingdom in some places as a, uh, like a crop. You plant it and it grows up and there comes a time of harvest. It is a limited deal where when the purpose of God is finished, that's the, only, that's the rest of his purpose for this world. There is no more reason for it to go on. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Boy, I want his word, don't you? I need his word. I need it this morning. I need it every morning. We need him. Thank God for his promises, for the hope that we have in him. But anyway, that's what he's talking about. But now in this context, Matthew 24 and 25, he's talking about the kingdom, not just as it's going to be spread. And he does mention that, but he's talking about the end of the age. And he pictures a time when, contrary to popular doctrine, Jesus is going to come not in some secret rapture. He's going to come openly with a loud trumpet and angels will be sent forth to gather his people out. Folks, what do you think happens when that's over? There's nothing left. He tells you what's going to happen to those left behind with, with Noah. Uh, that's in chapter 24. You look in 17, he brings Sodom into it. But he prepared, made a preparation to rescue his people. Every single one of them were rescued in Noah's day and made safe and removed from the scene. And their judgment fell. And what happened to those who were left behind? Every single one of them died. That's where this world is headed. That's how serious this is. Yeah. It's not about churchianity. It's not about fixing the world. His kingdom is not of this world. And folks, that's one of the things that it, it's good. It, we need to see this. We need to see that God's purpose is not to fix the world. It's not to fix America. Much as I'd love to see things happen in a different way, that ain't, what, that ain't what's going to happen. We need to see past all of the issues of this world and say, what is it really about? I'm, I'd, I'd be glad if, you know, my, my hope is not in a political party. It's not a political leader. I may have my preferences as to how I would like things from a practical standpoint to go on, but that's not where my hope lies. As a matter of fact, if we understand the Scriptures, we know it's not going to go. God's not going to save America. God's not going to save the world. There will never be that kind of peace on earth. He's never coming down and imposing his government on a lost world that has rejected him. That's not going to happen. There's only one thing that's going to happen, and that's when he comes. He will rescue his own and destroy the rest. It's so, it's so plain in the Scriptures. I'll tell you what happens is people will develop their own rules for understanding the Bible, believing they can, they can understand it through study. And then they'll look at the Old Testament and say, aha, it says this, it says that. And then they'll, they'll build a whole system of ideas on that. And then they'll go to the New Testament and try to fit it all in. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Folks, I want to look at the, at the revelation of Christ unfolding in the New Testament when the, when the uh, the thing that was a mystery now begins to be unlocked. Then you can look back and see what the prophets were really talking about. Yeah, they were talking about Israel, but who was Israel? Who was a Jew? You know, I wrote an article on that way, way back. Folks, God doesn't see Israelites. He doesn't see Jews the way man does. Though the children of Israel are as the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and so forth. There's so many, the, the, the truth is so plain, and I, I believe God wants to, wants to reestablish or wants to refresh our minds about some of these things. 
the one thing I, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to get to the point where our, we stand up here and just simply regurgitate our doctrine so that we can make sure we're all right theologically. That's not what we need. We need God's heart. We need God's message because this is relevant to what we're doing right now. It's not just about believing the right stuff about what's going to happen down there. This has relevance today. And the things that Ricky was talking about, that's at the heart of it. Because that's why the Lord is, wants these things to become real, not so we can be theologically correct, but so that we can have a relationship to Him and walk with Him and have what we need to be ready for all of that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So He's not just talking about the kingdom of heaven, but He's talking about the kingdom at that time. And as He unfolds this, we're seeing some things that are coming. Deception is certainly one of them. Ricky referred to that. There's a powerful deception, and it's one that God allows. We've talked about this from 2 Thessalonians 2, how God allows there to be a spirit of deception in the world that is, that is so total that mankind is just totally blocked from having any further capacity for God or truth. You're watching, uh, you're not seeing this happen and it's going to get worse, and it's going to unfold, and, and we're, just, we're just watching it. I don't know what the time frame is, but I know, I know what God has, has shown us, and I believe it's happening, and we need to walk in the light of it and live in the light of it. So that's one thing is deception. You're going to see persecution in a greater and greater way. I don't know exactly how all this is going to play out, but you, you, we just need to be ready to say, Lord, I'm going to serve you and trust you with whatever comes you're going to give me the grace to, with whatever you call me to walk through, but I am yours unconditionally. I'm not yours as long as, as long as life goes my way and I can ask you for what I want and get what I want and just make my own life in this world. I am yours come hell or high water. What did it cost Jesus to follow in his Father's will? That's what it costs you and me to lay down our lives and give them to Him unconditionally, but with the promise that as we do that from the heart, that He will indeed share His very life with us. There will be a spiritual resurrection to a life that can never die. Amen. Folks, that is what the issue is. And that, boy, as we come down to the end of the age, it's going to become more and more apparent who's on what side. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of, of many will, grow, will wax cold or grow cold. The love of most will grow cold, depending on the translation. We're going to see that. We're going to see family members betraying other family members. That's happening in other parts of the world right now. Folks, Jesus did not come, as he said, to, to bring peace, but a sword. And he's going to divide sometimes in the middle of families. Boy, it is going to, God's going to prove the reality of those who have the goods who've given them, given him their hearts, because anything short of that is going to come up short. That is the unfolding message. You know, right before this, he talks about how there are servants to whom responsibilities have been given. Okay? And how they carry them out is pretty is pretty revealing because there's one who's a faithful servant. And even though there's a delay seemingly he just goes on and he does what he knows to do because it's the right thing to do. Folks, we're going to have to walk by faith. We're going to have times when there are no feelings and it doesn't look very good. But I'll tell you, God's word is still true. And just as we have so many examples in Scripture of, of this principle of somebody walking when it didn't look right, didn't look good, but yet God honored faith. And so the faithful servant just kept doing what, it, what his master had told him to do, came to the end and was rewarded. But what happened to another servant, quote, unquote, he began to say, wait a minute, this is going, kind of going on and I've got other stuff I'd like to do. And so he began to eat and drink with the drunken, began to party, began to just, anyway, he didn't act like anything other than, he acted like anything other than uh, the, the faithful servant, what happened to him? He was out the door. What happened was not somebody who had it and lost it, but somebody who never really had it in the heart. 
over and over again. That is the message. That is what God is getting at. It has to be something that is real in here. If it isn't, something is going to bring it out. Okay? So that's the context. That's the time that he's talking about. What's it going to be like as we get closer and closer to the end? All right? Now he's talking about, he, he makes use of a, um, the, color, the custom of, of a, how a wedding was carried out in the, their, their day. And I want to be very careful not to try to make something out of every little thing, but rather to get to the heart of what he's talking about here. You know, a lot of times you had these elaborate ceremonies where the wedding party would be gathered and then the, the, bridegro the, the bridegroom would then make a spe very special entrance. And uh, I, I remember very, very plainly <laughs> being in India, one of the times we were visiting Timothy, Brother uh, Jimmy was with me on this occasion, and, and he had put us up uh, in a hotel in a city that was actually on a beach. And we didn't go into the beach, but I mean, it was a, you know, reasonably nice place. And what, we had become aware that there was some kind of a wedding scheduled, but we didn't know how it was going to open up or how it was going to unfold and how, what the traditions were. And so we woke up on Saturday morning, and just about daylight, all of a sudden, we heard what sounded exactly like gunfire. Well, we knew there was potential danger. There were people who didn't like Westerners, didn't like Christians, and we said, oh my God, what's happening? Well, what it turned out was the bridegroom was arriving on horseback with firecrackers. That was part of the, part of the, uh, part of the ceremony. So, but Jesus is taking basically something that was, that was part of their culture and talking about being ready for the arrival of the bridegroom, and that became a picture of the arrival of Jesus Christ at the end of the age, okay? Now, one of the things that I mean, there's so many, so many parts to this. I don't, want to, I don't want to belabor them, but of course it's at midnight, isn't it? The center of the story is at midnight. How many of you know that there is a point in time when God calls it midnight? God has a schedule. He knows the day, the hour. He's the only one that does know the day or the hour. But there is a time in which every process is absolutely fulfilled and there is a darkness that R Brother Ricky was talking about that is enveloping our world, and it's no secret. I mean, it's no, it's no surprise. God has told us, if you have people that absolutely harden their hearts and continually say no to God in here, some of them can be religious, but nonetheless, there is that inward resistance to really surrendering to Christ there is a darkness that grows until it, you, you pass the point of no return and only judgment follows. Is that not what happened in Noah's day? The thoughts of men, the thoughts and intentions of men's heart were what? Only evil continually. There was no capacity anymore. They had resisted the voice of God because he's, he said, I will know, and my spirit will not always. So what does that tell you? Had God just sort of left them alone or had he been striving? Yeah, there had been an outreach. My, I'll tell you, my God is merciful. He had been reaching out, but they had been saying no, and they reached a point where there was no more capacity. Even then, he said, yet it'll be 120 years. Isn't that amazing? But you see the process unfolding of darkness and what happens when a civilization says no. What happened to the Jewish nation? When Jesus came, he came for the sheep, but what about the rest? Jesus said, your house is left unto you desolate. And when his disciples showed him the amazing construction of this temple, this magnificent building, he said, there's not one stone that will be left upon another. And he talks about the, the time of destruction when their enemies would shut them in and there would just be utter destruction, utter wrath poured out upon that people. I'll tell you, that's the destiny. That, there are two destinies. Either, we're gonna, either people are going to be part of God's kingdom or they are going to literally be under the wrath of God. 
People don't want to hear that. But we need it. We need to have a realistic message out of the, that is true to the Word of God. Jesus didn't, didn't hold these things back. He wept over Jerusalem, but he still predicted their downfall, predicted that the wrath of God was going to come upon them. And as we pointed out recently in the service, he even said, you've, you've embraced the heritage of this, of this lost, rebellious culture, this religious culture. You've embraced it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you apostles and prophets, and some of them you're going to kill and you're going to persecute them. And what I'm doing this for is because I want the guilt of all the generations to fall upon this generation, and then wrath is going to be poured out. Folks, we're seeing that, that period of that principle play out in our world today. The gospel has gone out. Thank God to some degree it's still going out. But the gospel has gone out as a witness to all nations, but we are seeing a separation take place. We are seeing God call people out, but we are seeing people in a, that are exposed to that truth, rejecting it, and saying we are going to chart our own future. We have our own plans. We embrace that. And from, from God's point of view, it is darkness. It is gross darkness. And the fact that it's midnight, I think, is significant. You know, the Jewish day technically began at 6 o'clock in the evening, went to 6 o'clock the next day. So the night portion of it was from 6 to 6, isn't it? Midnight's exactly in the middle of that. I don't think that's an accident. I think God is saying this is an appointed time in the middle of the darkness of night. And what he's saying is all that has been unfolding all these years, it's coming to a climax when the only option, the only thing left is judgment. One of the other things that's really significant about this is it says the bride was, bridegroom was a long time in coming. And I think it's something the Lord wants us to be aware of. Now, I know some of you who were here when the Lord visited us so powerfully so many years ago. Remember how it was and how intense the presence of God was. How, I mean, things that were being revealed were just amazing, but the presence of God and the, the manifest presence of God was just powerful. And, oh, it was like, oh, he's coming certainly within five years. We're right at the gate. It's just, gonna, it's just about over. All God was doing was showing us what was coming without giving us a time frame. What happens when the time just sort of seems to drag on and you don't see the fulfillment of what we're talking about? How many people did we have who came on the excitement of what was happening who didn't stick around when it just kind of went on. See, God is wanting a faith that looks past every circumstance. And he has told us specifically that it's going to seem like he's delaying. Is he? No. He knows exactly the time. And I'll quickly read a scripture that we know over in 1 Peter, 2 Peter rather, chapter 3. Because this deals with this specifically. And it reveals something about why God would even allow a delay to happen. I'll, I'll just look down. Verse 3 is, is a good place to pick up. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. It tells you what the, what's behind the scoffing. Okay. They will say, where is this coming? He promised ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation, but they deliberately forget. It's a choice. That long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was de deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Do you believe that? It's nice. We, we like to believe the 
the sweet things that just give us help and comfort and all of that. And thank God for every one of them. But this is truth too. This is reality. This is the world that you live in. This is the world our young people are growing up in. You better understand it. This, I mean, your destiny depends on understanding this and, and walking in the light of it. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. You get that? The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with who? Patient with you. I believe on the one hand, he's certainly giving, giving people all the opportunity that they could ever, I mean, no one can go there and say, you didn't give me a chance. There's, I tell you, God's, God's judgment is going to be just. But I'll tell you, the patience is with us. I'm so glad he's patient with me, aren't you? Oh, thank God. He is going to continue to prepare everyone that has been born of his spirit who will look to him and drink in of what he gives us because I don't have what it takes to stand in this kind of darkness. But he does. He is faithful. He is not slow, okay? He, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God is not in a hurry to pour out his judgment. Jesus wept again over Jerusalem. That's his heart. But there does come a time when it absolutely reaches a climax and there's nothing left to do. If you have a world full of people who have made their choice, who have no capacity for God, and this is a temporary world, what's the point of going on? There is no point. And this, this world, like I say, is destined for something that he's going to be talking about here. But the day of the Lord, this is the day, this is midnight. <laughs> but the day of the Lord will come like a thief that is unexpected. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. I mean, what are you living for? What matters? Thank God. I don't, I, I, you know, in the natural, I don't look forward to the trouble and the difficulty that, that may, may well come. But I... I I find myself saying, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, whatever it takes, let's, let that day come. Reach everyone that, has, that, you, that can possibly hear the message. Reach them, Lord. Help us to do our part and be part of that. But Lord, oh God, wind this thing up. You get older, you, you realize there's nothing to live for here. You might as well say, just Lord, come. Praise God. I hope the young people can get this. I, rem I was one of the younger people when, when all this was happening. And we got some of them here this day, to this day, that are still with us, that got it. Some of them have gone on already to be with the Lord. But oh, every generation, this needs to become reality in your heart and in your life. This is the world in which you have been born. This is what it's about. If you miss this, you miss everything. This is what it's about. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteousness dwells. So I'll tell you, there is a time frame. We are watching two harvests come to, pat, come to fruition. The harvest of wickedness of people who've chosen their own way and the harvest of righteousness of those who have given and surrendered their lives lock, stock, and barrel, no conditions, into his hand, looking to him for the, sal for the salvation they cannot engineer in themselves. That's it. And I'll tell you, God is going to make manifest whether that is really in the heart or not. And that's one of the things that makes this passage concerning. I don't believe that anybody who's really and truly been born and sealed of God's Spirit is going to be lost. 
But the reality is there are people who sit in churches who will profess every one of these things because the foolish virgins were also there with the wise. They were there to look for the bridegroom. They were expecting him. They had the, they had the knowledge to go with all of that. They had the intentions that went with that. What they didn't have was the oil. Oil gives light. Of Jesus, it was said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Folks, he's talking about the oil of God's Spirit. He's talking about the reality of a born-again heart. And I'll tell you, even when there is a darkness that causes people to come to a place where they're asleep in a sense, I'll tell you, if you don't have this, you don't have anything to wake up to because there is a time when it is too late. That's the message of this. When God closes the door, it's closed. When God closed the door of the ark, it was closed. I'll tell you, you think about the people that rejected and killed Jesus. The condition, of how, the condition of people who thought they were serving God by killing the Son of God. Do you see what darkness is like? Folks, that's the spirit that is engulfing our world. When God withdraws His Spirit from influencing people, what happens? And He withdraws it because they say no repeatedly. What happens to, to people's hearts? Do they just, are they just an empty vessel? No, I'll tell you, devils rush in. And you see the manifestation in one form or another of satanic power, satanic deception, satanic wickedness, satanic hatred of God, hatred of you and me. But oh, thank God he's going to bring us to the end of the age. He's never going to leave us. But folks, the fact that they could be in a state of darkness and actually slumber and sleep tells me that you know, it, it reminds me of what Jesus said, in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man is coming. It's when you don't expect Him. Conditions had become such that they weren't even thinking, oh, this, is a, this, is, this means the Lord is about to come. They were just kind of looking at the, at the conditions. But I'll tell you, if we have something on the inside, if we are doing what Ricky was talking about and listening and growing and learning and becoming one, and, and just aligned with him completely, whatever the conditions are, when the voice comes, there's going to be something there that is capable of responding, capable of fulfilling the, the, power, the place that God has, has opened for us. I don't, I don't claim to be able to explain every little detail, and I don't think I need to. But do you get the heart of the message there? The reality is a warning to people that sit in church pews and affirm all of the right things and do all the right things and even sit there believing they are ready for the bridegroom to come, but they have never, ever faced the, the need of their own heart and never surrendered to Jesus Christ. He has never come in and sealed them by His Spirit. What a, what a horrible thing. So many others will have already fallen off to the wayside. But here is a time when, at the critical moment when the Lord says, it's time they're not ready. That's a pretty sober warning. And I pray that anybody here, anybody that hears this, will cry out to God and say, Oh God, search my heart. Lord, I need you. I want to be a part of your kingdom, and I have no power. God, show me the corruption of my own heart, my own need. And then show me the Savior and what He has done for me by bearing every sin upon His, upon his own back, shedding His blood so that I could, I could be completely freed from sin. The way, was, the way was opened to see you and to become a part of your kingdom, Lord. That's what, that's what it's all about. Don't be one of those that comes to that day and it's all over. You know, there's a scripture toward the end of Revelation. It says, He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. I remember all, there was about four different things. And he that is unrighteous, or and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Him that is holy, be holy still. 
There's a point in time when your condition is fixed. When choices have been made and the Lord says, okay, that's it. Your destiny has been determined by what you have chosen. Oh God, reach, reach out to people that are in need because there's still a day of grace. There's still an opportunity. We see the word going out. We see that there are people coming, but we also see the, the condition of the world and the way darkness is unfolding and spreading. It's very, very real. We see the politics of things and all these political battles and cultural battles that are going on, but do you see what's really happening? There are two kingdoms. God and His kingdom are reaching out. They're, that's more real than what we see in touch. That's what will last. God's kingdom is reaching out and convicting hearts and drawing them into His kingdom. But there is another kingdom. Boy, its day is short. Thank God. But He knows He's short and He's angry about it. So, I just I do the same thing as Ricky does. I just put this in the Lord's hands. He is able to save those who call upon Him from the heart. Don't find yourself, don't fool yourself into thinking you can sort of adhere to Christ in some, in some fashion without ever surrendering your heart and your life and being born of His Spirit. Don't fool yourself. If you do, the darkness will overtake you. If you walk in the light while there is light, God will give you light and you'll have what you need. Amen. And of course, he comes to the end of this and says, be ready because you don't know. So that's a, that's a warning to those who do believe. It's exactly what Brother Ricky was saying. We need to be taking in and realizing things aren't always going to be as they are. We need what he's giving us and he is preparing us to stand in an hour uh, the greatest hour of darkness the world has ever known. But I'll tell you, the light will be enough. Don't worry. That day will come when he sends his angels. Again, what a picture that would be. Can you imagine him showing up in the air and all of a sudden angels being dispatched everywhere and flying down and taking hold of somebody's hand and leading them up into the air? Folks, when that's done, when the last one is removed from the earth, what purpose is there in going on. There's nothing but fire and then judgment to follow. You know, our paper is the Midnight Cry Messenger, Midnight Cry Ministries. That's where this, that's where this came from. And I, I was just thinking as I came into this service, I, I can't remember the last time I preached on this passage. But it's real, and this generation needs to get it. These are the words of Jesus. They aren't mine. And if they are not a warning of what's coming and what we need, but also an encouragement, I don't know what they are. So let's take heed because this day is coming. Even if it looks like it isn't, it's coming. And it will look like it isn't. It will look like it isn't at times. But it's coming. Thank God that day is coming. Thank God that day is coming. Oh, that's our day of deliverance. That's the day we look forward to. Tell you, if you've got aches and pains and you're getting, you're getting your age, that'll be gone. That'll be gone. Because this kingdom that, that was launched and has been carried out through, through the history of the world, the Word says that when he shall have a... I have to paraphrase... 1 Corinthians 15, when he's put down all power and authority, he's going to deliver the kingdom up to his father. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For, folks, when is that enemy destroyed? It's when he comes. That's the last enemy. And folks, then he's going to deliver up the kingdom to the father, and it's going to go on forever and ever, and all the rest will be done away. So I just pray that God will make this truth live because this needs to be not something you theologically embrace. This needs to inform our lives right now. What are you living for? Where is your heart? Are you doing what Ricky said? Are, you, are, are we li listening to the Word of God and letting it change us? Are we allowing Him to change us? What choices are we making? What is our life about? Are we looking to the things of this world? Is that where our heart is? Folks, some of the delay 
is to make manifest these kinds of things, the true condition of the heart. So anyway, I could go on and on, but I think that enough has been said. So think back of the, the challenge that Brother Ricky gave. In a way, that's why, I, well, the Lord knows as to what needs to be said when. But folks, this is real. This is not just somebody's theology. These are the words of Jesus. And he, he does it because he loves us. He speaks them because he loves us and he wants us to be ready. And we have everything in him that we need to be ready. You don't have to be afraid of this. But we need to take it soberly and seriously. So if there's somebody here and you're just, you're here and you're kind of going along, but, you, but it's never gotten down into here, be warned. There will come a time if that does not change when you will not be able to change. Now is the day of salvation. Now it's when he speaks that we need to hear. So I just pray that God will touch the hearts of everyone to whom he's speaking today. May God bless you.